Thank you very much. And thank you everyone for joining us uh, for this talk and for your interest on the, on, uh, the Ashton uh, Canal. So I am uh, a volunteer at the IWA's Manchester branch. And before uh, I go to the uh, uh, main part of the talk, which is uh, introducing you the Ashton Canal and the work that we've been doing there, uh, I think I should uh, introduce uh, myself as well. So uh, my journey uh, to the canals began in 2014 when I moved to Manchester to um, uh, study uh, at the Manchester Metropolitan University and I did my degree here in Manchester Met uh, on the topic of canal tourism. So that went well and uh, of course I uh, should uh, also mention that I normally don't uh, wear this robe while on canals. Um, it's uh, maybe a, a bit more like, like this. Um, so my professional or academic interest is mostly in the canal tourism, but uh, now as, uh, as a volunteer uh, at the Manchester branch, um, I have been uh, doing a lot of uh, general regular volunteering and, and maintenance work on the, on the canal. And uh, I would like to share some of that work that we've been doing, uh, especially on the Ashton. So Ashton Canal, uh, for those of you who are might not uh, so familiar with its history, uh, opened in 1796. It's not a very long canal, just um, uh, 10 or 11 kilometers, depending on different sources, running from Ashton to central Manchester. And here we can also see a small uh, map uh, from the uh, end of uh, the 18th century, uh, depicting the uh, uh, Ashton, under, Ashton Underline and, and the canal. And uh, today, the, this is the this is the trajectory uh, of the of the canal. Here, uh, one little uh, nice map from 1824, uh, from uh, depicting the uh, town of Ashton, and uh, also showing the. Uh, uh, Ashton uh, Canal, uh, it was called the Manchester and Ashton Canal and River Tame. And here I have a little um, quote uh, from a book from 1842 that said that by the Ashton Canal merchandise is conveyed to Manchester and thence by water to Liverpool. By the Huddersfield Canal a water conveyance is open to the German Ocean. That, uh, uh, that's how they called the North Sea until the end of the uh, 19th century. And by the Peak Forest Canal a water communication is made into the heart of Derbyshire for the conveyance of fuel and reception of lime. The con convenience of transit opens for the coal district and never failing market. And uh, indeed, uh, the canal was a very important uh, transport route uh, at that time and for a very long time. And uh, in addition to the transport, there was also a very busy passenger service on packet boats. Uh, and uh, these uh, packet boats run from Fairfield uh, Junction to Ashton, Stockport, uh, Staley Bridge, Hyde, Marple, and Manchester. And um, it uh, could be it uh, could be interesting for you to know that uh, Manchester, uh, but sorry, Northwest was um, uh, next to Scotland, one of the few uh, areas where the canals were used uh, extensively also for uh, for passenger travel. But this um, golden age of the canals uh, sadly did not last uh, very long because already in 1848 the owners of the canal uh, sold it uh, to the uh, Sheffield, Ashton Underline and Manchester Railway 
and so the slow um, decline of the canal uh, began. So um, I'm going to make a hundred years jump now through the uh, world wars and also after the World War II, as we all know, IWA was uh, established uh, and the uh, canals were also uh, nationalized after, after the war. And the new uh, in, uh, British Waterways Board was, uh, was established. However, of course, the um, uh, importance of the canals for transport uh, steadily declined. However, Ashton Canal was still one of the last uh, three uh, canals that had an uh, active um, uh, uh, transportation until that 61-62 uh, uh, when, when all the transport ended on the, on the canals. Um, and the general talk about them, of course, as you well know, was that there's not much point of keeping them. And I found this article in The Guardian from 1961 that was uh, advocating uh, filling in Ashton Canal and uh, giving the reasons of health and safety, the possibility of lowering the level of roads. Um, uh, extra land being available uh, available for development, uh, as well as they said, quoting, putting an end to mosquito breeding and the weeds and odors of decay. So that was not uh, very nice, the reputation the canals had. And here's uh, uh, another quote from an article in Daily Mirror from uh, 1967. Uh, saying that um, I have canoed on the Ashton Canal, but it was no pleasure dodging rubbish and bluffing through weeds. So it's quite obvious that something had to be done about this. But of course, uh, already in the 40s, uh, IWA had been established and uh, Robert Aikman, as you know, one of the uh, founders of the um, uh, IWA, uh, he also saw <clears throat> it's really important to namely restore and reopen the Ashton Canal. And so there were already uh, several, um, uh, several uh, uh, canal societies formed uh, in, in the North uh, uh, West and an important uh, work party um, took place in the February of 1968 when um, uh, Peak Forest Canal Society and IWA's uh, London and uh, Home Counties uh, branch uh, organized a work party on the Lock 18 of, of the Ashton Canal. Uh, the, the canal has altogether 18 locks. And uh, one of the organizers and attenders of, the, of this uh, work party was uh, Graham Palmer, who obviously does not need any introduction for those who know about IWA and work, uh, one of the uh, uh, starters and establishers of the work. And this, during this work party, uh, 20 tons of uh, rubbish were removed from the canal between uh, Fairfield Lock and, and Droylston. And it was um, reportedly during this work party that Graham Palmer and John Foley came up with the idea to organize even a bigger work party on this canal. And uh, also it was the members of the Peak Forest Canal Society that came, idea, came up with this idea of uh, the Cheshire Ring to better promote the uh, Northern Canals. So what uh, Graham Palmer and his, uh, his collaborators and friends did was that they uh, then uh, took a walk uh, on the whole length of the Ashton Canal to see and document the situation and what is going on uh, on the on the canal, and uh, 
uh, there are uh, lots of uh, wonderful uh, pictures in the collection of uh, Harry Arnold uh, and uh, 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 I will show you uh, some of these pictures on uh, during this talk. So this is the um, Store Street Aqueduct, uh, which was originally built in 1798, and now a clay two listed building. Uh, here we have uh, Lock Four uh, on the on the canal. Uh, mostly uh, this area does not look like this anymore. And here we have uh, uh, Lock Five. Uh, And the same year, the uh, famous Operation Ashton was held. And here on this picture, you can see the uh, notice on the canal side about this Ashton uh, Canal uh, cleanup. And I will read you what this notice says. Uh, it says, during this weekend, hundreds of volunteers from all over Britain are cleaning out and improving this section of the Ashton Canal. This waterway could be a major asset to your neighbourhood. It leads to more than 2,000 miles of other canals and rivers throughout England and Wales. It belongs to you. Well-kept waterways are an asset for angling, rowing, boating, walking, camping, youth activities and away from it all relaxation. Derelict waterways are an eyesore, a health hazard, a danger, a burden on the rates, a detriment to the neighbourhood. The choice. Dereliction by continued neglect or restoration for recreation and utility. Develop the waterways for leisure and pleasure. So uh, very difficult to not to agree with it uh, and I would say very, very relevant even, even nowadays. And here on this picture, you can see uh, one of these uh, Operation Ashton planning meetings uh, by, the, by the canal side. Uh, uh, Graham Barmer had uh, established Navi's Notebook, which was the magazine for, for the work uh, already in uh, 1966, before the official establishment uh, of the work. Uh, and this magazine um, gave information about, uh, about canal uh, work parties. And um, for the Operation Ashton, there was a special um, uh, edition of the uh, Navis uh, published called the Ashton Crafter. And it uh, combined uh, practical info for all the attendees and also contained um, uh, paper, short papers uh, on the importance of the restoration by Howard Langley and, and Ted Hill uh, from the Peak Forest uh, Canal Society. And here you can see the uh, event itself, Operation Ashton, uh, 1968. Uh, again, wonderful pictures here by, uh, by Harry Arnold. Uh, unfortunately, I never uh, got to meet him, but I'm sure that many of you uh, knew him very well. But um, I have uh, met uh, his daughter, Julie, who uh, I'm very thankful for um, uh, sharing these pictures with me for. Uh, so here on this picture, you can see members of the Shropshire Union Canal Society. Uh, who are uh, working near the Lock 16 on the Ashton Canal. And Harry Arnold was um, a member and the chairman of that society as well. And uh, the same society also started a campaign uh, to save the Montgomery Canal. And they held a big um, uh, canal dig in 1969, uh, so one year after Operation Ashton. Here yeah, another nice picture of the volunteers working um, uh, between the Lock 15 and 16. And originally for this event, 300 volunteers um, were planned. However, uh, 600 came from all over the uh, UK and they were working uh, between Locks 11 and 17. And more than 2,000 uh, tons of rubbish was 
was taken from the canal. So it was a major restoration um, uh, uh, and, and maintenance uh, project this one, one weekend. However, interestingly, um, this big uh, substantial achievement did not um, convince um, local newspapers which uh, still con uh, continue to uh, call Ashton Canal um, a, a so-called killer canal. And uh, Harry Arnold has a very nice and very interesting article published in Waterways uh, World in 2008, uh, where uh, he quotes the um, chief public health inspector of Troilston at the time who wrote the report about this event uh, saying, um, I'm quoting, Operation Ashton was a publicity gimmick by ill-informed amateurs and of no help whatsoever to Troilston residents, ending quotes. So um, that was a very interesting, uh, interesting uh, opinion. Uh, but what he did get right was that, yes, it was a good publicity event because actually um, news about Operation Ashton uh, um, spread the whole, in the whole country and uh, uh, the event was covered in, in several big newspapers, including Times, uh, Guardian and also in the, in the Mirror. And this big and important um, uh, volunteering effort was followed by another one, the Ashtag. Uh, uh, or Ashton attack in 1972 and here you can see uh, on the picture on the left uh, Graham Palmer uh, walking into the uh, into the uh, uh, Ash uh, Ashton work party uh, control building and uh, the waterway uh, recovery group uh, had already uh, been established uh, by him uh, at the, that time. <clears throat> And here you can see a picture of the volunteers uh, queuing uh, to, uh, to check in. Um, maybe I would have to say that uh, unfortunately in our present day uh, work parties, we do not have so long queues. However, we could say that the canal itself is in, 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 in a better condition. So this is a testament to all the volunteers working, working on, this, on this canal. And here you can see inside from the control center, uh, you have on the right, uh, Beryl Arnold, uh, wife of Harry Arnold, and in the center, uh, Jane uh, Godwin, who used to write uh, articles for the uh, Waterways World uh, magazine. And here is one um, um, uh, article uh, on hashtag in the Waterways World. And I would like to thank uh, Heather Wasty for sending me this wonderful article uh, and also from pointing out that this uh, uh, mysterious uh, J.G. Uh, author of this article is actually uh, Jane Godwin uh, who was uh, pictured on the previous uh, photo. Uh, so this uh, uh, article specifically talks about the women, women's world uh, at Ashtag. I will um, quote some of um, some of the um, uh, interesting quotes uh, from that article. Uh, there were no skirts to be seen at Ashton on the cold grey morning of March 25th, but that does not mean that the women of the canal fraternity are shrinking violets when it comes to getting dirty. Indeed, this is one place where women's sleep comes into its own and jobs are allocated regardless of sex. Every woman playing an important role in this, the biggest ever volunteer working party to be held on our England waterways. Uh, well, and then um, uh, regardless of that, uh, she does go on to mention that uh, the girls managed to look attractive in their strictly functional clothing and also that a rubbish filled canal may seem an unlikely place for romance to blossom but many of the girls had met their future husbands on working parties and the prospect of making new friends of the opposite sex is certainly an attraction of a big dig. Uh, unfortunately I have not attended work myself yet 
So those of you who are workers here would have to uh, comment on that. Uh, you can use the uh, chat or the uh, Q&A um, uh, section. Um, Heather Wasty from Alarum Theatre uh, has written a really wonderful uh, found poem based on this very article, which I would have loved uh, to share with you today. But unfortunately, before when we were testing our, our technology, it, it did not work. So, but I'm sure that Heather will um, maybe share that, uh, that uh, uh, her reading that uh, poem, uh, beautiful poem by the canal side, uh, maybe on on her uh, podcast or or on Alarum Theatre's uh, uh, website. Uh, but regardless, uh, I wanted uh, just to mention uh, that uh, there is a very interesting uh, book about women's role on the on the restoration of waterways uh, to be published very soon. Uh, uh, it is. Uh, uh, put together by the wonderful people at the Alarum Theatre and uh, while you are waiting for the, this uh, book to be published uh, so that you could read about all these um, uh, wonderful stories about the women uh, from the end of the Second World War uh, to up to uh, up until uh, 1970s uh, so it's about their early uh, days of campaigning for the canals, the stories of how they got involved in, in the restoration projects, how they protested, how they lobbied, how they took the journeys through the tunnels to show that the canals are navigable. I have seen a sneak peek of this book and it was really, really amazing. But while you're waiting for the book to be published, uh, then I uh, uh, recommend um, going and listening to the podcast of uh, of some of those uh, stories uh, and you can see the link uh, here so coming now to the um, contemporary times to the uh, manchester branch so as you can see we have a lot of very different uh, canals uh, in our in our branch and we have um, uh, organized working parties on uh, several of them. However, uh, indeed, in the recent years, and I have been in, in IWA since 2014, uh, we have been uh, focusing on the Ashton Canal. And I found this uh, quote on the Ashton Canal, on this canal book, uh, and this quote is from 2019. Glass on walls, barbed wire, spiked railings, burglar alarms, razor wire and video cameras all emphasize the depressed nature of the area. So yes, uh, I am aware that maybe the Ashton Canal is not the most popular or maybe it is not mostly known for uh, being a very scenic canal and maybe at times it's also been known as, as a little rough. However, um, I'm sure that uh, there is a way to change all that. And as, as I, will, uh, I would like to show you, I'm quite sure that we have already uh, changed a lot of that. And maybe even 2009, it was already a bit, um, bit obsolete uh, to, to, to talk about the uh, depressed nature of the area. So what are we doing on the canal? Uh, as the, as the branch, we organize regular work parties and uh, these take place every uh, third Saturday of the month. I mean, obviously, of course, now, uh, sadly, we have had to uh, cancel the work parties, but we, we do hope we can get uh, back to the uh, uh, canal soon again. And we have uh, adopted a stretch uh, starting from lock four on the canal and now up to uh, 16. We started going little by little. I think we, we went from first from uh, to the lock um, maybe eight and then 11, and now we've, we've made it to uh, lock 16. Uh, and I just put this little video here so that you wouldn't think that the Ashton Canal is so beautiful and you know our beautiful glorious Manchester weather 
Uh, so mostly the work parties are, are like that. But our volunteers come out in, in blizzards and whatever the weather is, we will be there. Uh, during our work parties, we of course do regular uh, maintenance work that all the work parties do. So we do a lot of vegetation clearance, we do a lot of litter picking. However, we also have some little special projects that uh, we are very uh, keen about. So one of them is our uh, incredible edible Ashton Canal uh, little vegetable uh, garden. And here you can see uh, uh, the building process of, of that uh, little uh, raised um, uh, bed. And uh, this is now near the um, uh, lock four and to your right uh, would be the uh, Manchester City Etihad uh, Stadium. This is how the um, garden was constructed. And this here is the uh, finished uh, uh, garden or uh, several months later with the um, uh, produce uh, already uh, growing. So there are a lot of things growing there, uh, strawberries, beetroot, uh, chives, onions, parsley, uh, some peas as well. And as you can see, the, uh, the garden also features an information board which uh, provides uh, background uh, on the plants. Uh, such as the growing cycle and also encourages local people to, um, to tend to the garden and, and pick any herbs and vegetables uh, they need. And this has proven very, very popular and uh, we have not had much, much trouble with this garden and, and, uh, and uh, people really have uh, taken care of it and have not littered it. And as you can see, and, and go back one slide. If you look at this uh, wall uh, behind the garden, which is uh, nice and clean, and then uh, it has been adorned with some graffiti, but um, uh, the, the graffiti artists who did that, they did not touch our, uh, our uh, beautiful um, garden, which is very nice. And uh, here you can see it. Uh, 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 on the background, on the, on the right, the parts of the Etihad Stadium are, are visible. And also one aspect that we really like about this little garden is that it's a very good demonstration of the uh, possibilities of recycling, because uh, this uh, planter is made of um, uh, reclaimed wood. Uh, these are old lock gates which have been replaced and we think that it's really beautiful that these old lock gates um, can uh, take a new lease uh, of life and, and uh, now still stay uh, near, near the uh, canal side. And it also uh, demonstrates our uh, branch's uh, commitment uh, to be as uh, environmentally friendly uh, as possible. And uh, since we were really uh, encouraged um, after the success of the Incredible Edible Garden, we started um, uh, building and um, establishing little uh, canal side gardens along the Ashton Canal. And these little gardens uh, feature various uh, wildflowers. And as such, they uh, form part of the uh, Bee Highway uh, along the uh, canal. And we have been also very lucky in our branch that, uh, for example, uh, one of our former committee members, Denise Connolly, was a very good uh, gardener and our current uh, branch chairman, uh, Phil Broughton, is also a very, very um, good and, and uh, accomplished gardener. So we have the best uh, specialist uh, knowledge. Uh, and also, um, uh, in addition to this uh, uh, canal side gardens uh, project, we also have a little project which we call Ringing the Ring, which is putting uh, uh, mooring rings uh, along the canal where there have been none. And there have also been some special events celebrating the uh, previous, uh, previous um, uh, achievements. 
So for example, in 2012, um, uh, the branch uh, celebrated 40 years from ASHTAP and held a canal cleanup event in Dukenfield uh, Junction. And this was organized by Alison Smedley. So thank you, Alison, uh, together with the, the IW Manchester branch. And uh, the man you see on the boat here is uh, Bob Kivini, who was also participating on, at the ASHTAC at the 1972. Uh, we also celebrated um, Operation Ashton in 2018, 50 years. So what we did was we held a work party on the canal and after the work, and we also put a little um, information boards up uh, to um, uh, give people, uh, passers-by, a little history about uh, this great event uh, so that they could learn more about the, um, the local history of where they're living. And of course, we had many uh, people who had uh, uh, come up and have a chat with us who had uh, either participated in Operation Ashton or Ashtag or whose uh, relatives or parents uh, had. And after the work party, we had a screening of um, my Keeps uh, film to, uh, uh, to celebrate uh, this uh, great event. And uh, these, um, uh, all these activities uh, have also been uh, um, talked about in the uh, either C uh, CRT, uh, uh, website and also we were very lucky to have an article about our um, incredible edible garden to be published in the waterways uh, magazine so we are really trying to um, raise knowledge about um, uh, about what we are uh, doing um, and also an important thing uh, I did definitely have to mention is that we are not uh, the only uh, volunteer group working on the on the Ashton Canal. There are others, uh, for instance, um, on uh, the locks from one to four, there is um, a group called the Ancoats Canal Project. And, um, and uh, basically, so they are uh, working up to, and up, up to the lock four, and then uh, the IWA Manchester uh, takes uh, over so that most of the canal is uh, nicely uh, taken care of. And uh, they also have had a lot of very interesting uh, uh, projects. For example, they uh, collaborated with uh, uh, a project by uh, universities uh, from Britain, Netherlands, Italy and Spain, who um, uh, collaborated with them and uh, uh, they uh, created some uh, walking trails uh, about different canals and there are also uh, a few on the Manchester Canal. So if you uh, go to this website, these are meant actually for uh, going uh, and walking so you can download them on your mobile phone and then just follow the, uh, the, the walking trail, but you can just uh, uh, do it virtually now that we all have so much time in our hands. So you can look at the pictures and listen to the narration about these interesting places about the uh, canals in, in Manchester, but also in, uh, in other uh, uh, countries. And coming back to our uh, branch, uh, we also uh, hold uh, uh, other events. So we don't only uh, go out on the canal and um, uh, and get ourselves uh, muddy, but we also have nice meetings where we can sit down and listen to uh, different wonderful um, uh, presentations. For example, we have had Liz McIver uh, to come and talk to us. And we also uh, have uh, various uh, other socializing events. So for example, our AGMs are now held on uh, um, on the same uh, city center cruises uh, boat uh, trip uh, uh, boat Emmeline Bankhurst. So every year we now take a um, nice little cruise, uh, sometimes even accompanied uh, by a water quiz, which are always very difficult. 
And uh, here is another social event. Um, uh, our branch is visit to uh, Chesterfield Canal. And, uh, and here is uh, our uh, current uh, committee. Uh, and on the uh, picture uh, below, we have uh, Steve Connolly and Denise Connolly. Steve was our former vice chairman, and uh, it was uh, in large part of Steve's uh, uh, work and his, um, his uh, 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 guidance of uh, that uh, all these projects could, uh, could come to life. And so um, we were very happy when Steve um, uh, was awarded the Richard Bird Medal uh, last year which we felt was really truly the uh, great acknowledgement um, to all the work that the branch and, and Steve have, um, have done. So that is more or less it from me. Uh, it would be lovely if you would uh, keep uh, in touch uh, with us. Uh, visit our branch's website. Uh, of course, the uh, new website will go uh, online uh, uh, in few months, so uh, so we hope to have much more information and more pictures. Uh, but uh, meanwhile, uh, check our Facebook page and uh, take a look at the pictures on our Instagram. <coughs> and uh, I would like to finish with very a big thanks to all the uh, Manchester branch and IWA uh, committee members and all the volunteers. All the volunteers in the past, in the present, and also the future volunteers. And my special thanks goes to Julie Arnold for providing the wonderful uh, images, and also to uh, Helen Wasty from the Alarm Theatre. So that's it from me. Thank you very much. Go straight out uh, to uh, a question that's come through from uh, Roger Stalker. Um, uh, delighted to have you on the call tonight, uh, Roger. Um, Roger's a, a real avid cyclist and he cycled the length of the Ashton Canal. He lives in London um, and he was asking, do you know roughly how many boats are using the canal? Um, uh, because as he was cycling it, he didn't see too many folks using it. And, and he was wondering also whether uh, local uh, Manchester Group, Canal and River Trust, local authorities, whether they have any plans uh, to develop and encourage more people to use the canal. What are your thoughts on that? I don't have the exact numbers of how many boats uh, use the canal, but just as from my experience of um, being on that canal at least once a month, uh, I would say that during the summer we do have boats coming through and quite a few and regardless of its um, previous reputation as a bit of a rough canal it still is uh, part of the Cheshire ring so if you're doing the ring you have to go through you can't avoid this canal really and yes we have we have during the summer we have boaters coming through uh, we often uh, ch have a chat with them there are days we have several, we have a lot of higher boats doing the rain, you know, trying to complete it in a week, some of them are mad. And, um, and so, yes, uh, uh, there, are, there are boats uh, uh, coming through. Uh, about encouraging more boaters, uh, yes, that's, that's why we have the Ringing the Ring um, uh, initiative. So that you know, if those boats are there, that at least they could that they could moor when where they where they need. But of course, I do have to say that I guess regularly when you're doing the ring, then the, the Ashton Canal bar you normally try to complete in a day. So you normally wouldn't want to stay overnight uh, somewhere in in between Ashton and and and. Manchester City Centre. Well, that's that, that's a useful description, and, and actually, that uh, just brings me to one of the questions I was going to ask, uh, or a comment that I was going to make, and just then get some of your thoughts on it. 
Uh, one of the most encouraging things that I've read about over the recent years is the collaboration of different IWA branches and local groups in that uh, Cheshire Ring initiative to make sure that mooring rings were, uh, were in place. Um, how did that come about and, and what would you say stimulated that much more collaborative approach to working together uh, right across the different IWA branches and uh, different areas even of uh, Canal and River Trust waterways? Yes, we have a very good uh, relationship with the CRT and uh, uh, our, the former um, our CRT contact uh, who uh, who used to attend our work parties. Um, uh, Terry Evans really has been uh, um, just a wonderful, wonderful person who has helped us with. Uh, um, with tools, with equipment. We also, of course, have our own equipment as well, but he, for example, has, um, uh, uh, has uh, he was the one who sourced us these uh, um, old lock gates for our garden. And, uh, yeah. uh, and, and, and I would say that, well, the, in regards of the collaboration between different uh, branches and societies, uh, as you know, the linear village is very small and everybody knows everybody. So, of course, if we have the general Manchester branch, then uh, we have a lot of overlapping with various canal societies and uh, restoration societies. So there are several people who are the same people who are uh, branch uh, volunteers, but they also volunteer for their local uh, local um, uh, canal uh, societies and local restoration societies. And right. I mean, why? Uh, of, and of course, there is like it's the same canal, like uh, like with ankles, they do their bit, we do our bit, and 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 that's that's how it is. Good to hear it. Um, now another question that came came in was uh, from Paul Morgan. Uh, how long did the restoration take overall? And when did those authorities and different commentators start to change that negative attitude towards something that's a bit more positive? Well, it was a gradual process over the 70s, I would say. And then we get to the 80s where you would have more boaters and the um, canal and the, the, the more working parties and the more of these events, the cleanup events and the canal looks better and better. So it was a gradual process. And then, of course, when we come to the 90s and those lottery funding schemes and and so it was a gradual change in that sense. And then suddenly, on one hand, you would then have a situation where you have new developments going up, for example, this Ancoats, the start of the canal. And suddenly, it's not the killer canal anymore. Suddenly, all the real estate prices go up because it's a waterfront development. So, uh, so there was a little change there. Uh, however, on the other hand, you could still say that this sort of, as we, you, as we all know, this sort of um, narrative or story of danger or the killer canal, that also still persists, including in Manchester. Uh, so I guess canals are very interesting in the, in the sense that they are sort of places or spaces of juxtapositions. On the one hand, canals are beautiful rural places of relaxation. On the other hand, the very same canal can be perceived by people as ugly or dangerous, and etc. So it, they're a conundrum. Yeah, different things appeal to different people and that's one of the beauties of the, the waterways. Now we've got about 10 minutes left and I'm actually seeing lots of questions starting to appear here. So uh, let's, uh, let's crack on with those. Um, so uh, a question, as, as you adopt additional stretches of canal, how do you ensure that you can maintain these whilst 
continuing to improve other areas prior to adoption. How do you maintain that balance? Yes, uh, maintaining balance is important. And uh, when, when, when talking about the Ashton Canal specifically, I would say it was interesting to see that in a way it was also, um, it is a self-fulfilling prophecy in the sense that if you go there and if you take care of it and if you have this, uh, and if you have the constant, constant presence and you have this garden and saying, this is, this is the garden for everybody, please take care of it as we do, etc. And people see that you're doing things and then you get actually less rubbish. And, and I, sometimes I have been on a work party and you know, trying to get some rubbish uh, picked, but there is none. So, you know, I have to walk a long way before I find some. And, and it's great. But of course, I do agree that I, I do have to say that in a way we have been discussing this uh, at our committee meetings as well, that, that we have been paying a lot of um, um, attention to Ashton Canal, that may, maybe we should um, uh, come back to other, other canals as well. We, we do have uh, working parties on other canals as well, like Rochdale Canal, etc. So, but yes, it is important to maintain the balance, I agree. Yep, it's a never ending uh, a task. Um, so a couple of comments that have come through as well, um, really echoing what you've said. Uh, Paul England has said, uh, I use the Ash Ashton Canal regularly for leisure uh, and the range of biodiversity is excellent. Um, are there any plans to enhance this further by encouraging natural habitats for birds and insects? Oh, absolutely. And hello, Paul. Nice to nice that you uh, came to, to, the, to the talk. Um, I, should, I should come and uh, join your Ankles Canal Project uh, volunteer parties more often. And yes, uh, um, encouraging and increasing biodiversity is definitely one of our uh, goals. And that's why we have been gradually expanding those uh, canal side gardens which we always have uh, uh, wildflowers and we make sure that, uh, so these gardens are not just for the, for the beauty or for, 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 the, uh, for the beauty's sake. They, they're there as part of this uh, bee highway. We want the Ashton Canal to be a bee highway. Yeah, and I, I see Paul's comments about uh, being a trustee of, in the uh, Ancoats group and the, the bee orchids and so on. So uh, yeah, Another great piece of work there. Um, so uh, a question uh, that's come through, are there any plans to restore the arms of the Ashton? Um, this particular questioner has uh, used the Ashton and never had a problem. Um, he's suggesting the more people that use it, the more usable it becomes. But what, what were your thoughts on restoring some of the arms off, off the, the, edge, the sides of the Ashton? Well, I would not mind bringing it on. The more, the better. <laughs> there are, there are, there are a lot of uh, arms, and uh, actually, Ashton was interesting that it historically it used to have um, uh, eleven miles of different arms. So that's a lot. <laughs> and uh, at the moment, there are also several uh, societies uh, uh, working on restoring. Uh, um, uh, different arms like uh, the Stockport uh, branch, etc. Yeah. So, um, so, so yes, I'm definitely for it. But um, when it comes to the very particular restoration uh, work, then I'm afraid I'm not the best one to um, know the plans about that. Okay, and perhaps if you uh, hear anything about that or anyone knows anything about that, uh, you can post it on the uh, IWA Manchester branch uh, Facebook group. It's something I uh, have followed and uh, it's one of my best ways of catching up with all of the IWA activity across the country. And I recommend anyone, uh, whether you're in the area uh, of Manchester or not, make sure you uh, uh, follow uh, and like the uh, Manchester, uh, IWA Manchester branch uh, Facebook page. Um, just a couple more questions. We've got about five minutes to go. Um, also, um, a comment that's uh, uh, going back, back to a comment that uh, Roger made earlier. He was saying, does the branch uh, have uh, any information 
uh, on how to use and book the uh, uh, Pomom uh, lock uh, because uh, sometimes it's not that clear online how to use that uh, and connect between the Ashton and the Manchester ship can uh, the uh, 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 ship canal. Um, no, Pomona connects uh, Ship Canal with Bridgewater Canal. That's right, that's right. Yeah. So that is a little um, out of the way for, but um, yes, you need to, uh, the, uh, uh, it's not the CRT Canal, so uh, mm. it's the, owned by Bill Holdings. P, and, yeah. um, and yes, if you wanted to use that lock, you will have to book in advance. So I would, um, suggest either look, uh, googling it or send me an email and and i can direct you to the right person who will know how to book it great i think that might be useful because i think uh, the questioner was uh, perhaps struggling to find uh, much information uh, online uh, so another question um, from uh, uh, Mick Bradley, uh, do you get involved in graffiti removal? So you saw, you, you did point out that there was some uh, graffiti adorning the wall behind your uh, your little garden, but uh, do you ever get involved in removal? Actually, well, no, I can only talk, uh, tell you about the past six years, and we haven't, except for when graffiti is on the lock gates and lock beams. And then we then we, we do a lot of uh, repainting the locks, but not not because of graffiti specifically, but just when the locks need a little TLC, then we paint the locks. But we haven't done any uh, removing of uh, graffiti from the from the walls. I mean, yeah, it's it's not something we've done. Okay, so I'm just looking down some of these other questions. I don't think we're going to get to all the, the questions tonight. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll grab the questions and if we can provide answers later, we will. Um, so um, again, a couple of comments, uh, some folks actually answering some of the questions in the background. So that's, that's very helpful. Um, I'm just checking to see. Um, yeah, lots of comments actually more uh, on this. So that's that's very that's very useful. Um, yes, and I just wanted to say that um, uh, my I shared my email, and you can also find my email on the Manchester branch uh, web page. So I'm sure that many of you have a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience about these earlier uh, work parties. So I would actually be really interested uh, um, in chatting with you about it, uh, not uh, just as a, a co-volunteer, but also as, as, a, as, a, as a researcher. Yeah, well, uh, we've, um, uh, it's been really helpful. That there's plenty of comments going on in the, in the background on the, the Q&A page, and I think some of those questions have been uh, answered, and I think uh, some very useful comments about what some other branches have done. Uh, it's been uh, great to have so many people here. And Mario, I'm just going to hand over to you. Any last thoughts uh, that you'd like to share in terms of folks getting a little bit more involved in what you're doing uh, and uh, uh, how you think uh, the folks that are on the uh, almost 50 people uh, on, on the call here tonight, uh, what would your, your last, last thoughts and uh, messages be to them tonight as I guess in your role as publicity officer for uh, for Manchester branch. Well, very big thank you to everybody for um, for coming to this talk, and um, uh, I'm sure many of you are already uh, canal volunteers. And but if some of uh, of you are not, then I really would like to encourage uh, everyone to participate. Uh, it's, it's been like this from the very beginning of the IWA that IWA always finds something to do for everybody. So if, um, if, if restoration and mud and uh, things like that is your thing or, uh, or maintenance work, there is plenty of that, but there is also plenty of other volunteering. Uh, you can also dig yourself deep into the internet or the documents and, and, and to do that kind of work. So yes. 
guess um, I would encourage everyone to for now uh, follow the canals virtually and hopefully we can all soon uh, go back to the, the canals uh, in the analog version as well. And again, if, if anyone has any questions or would like to chat uh, to me about the uh, previous uh, uh, experiences or if you have actually participated yourself on NASHTAG or, or Operation NASHTAG, I would, I would love to chat to you. Thank you.